Hey folks, how's it going? It's Game Webcam. So, sorry I haven't been working on this video, that's mainly because I fell into demotivation hell again. But, I'm back. This video is a direct follow-up to my previous video, The Fall of Brick Hill. So, if you have not watched that video, I will link it in the top right. Go and watch that video first so that this video makes more sense. Another reason why I haven't put out this video much sooner is because ever since I made my last video, a whole lot has happened. The makers of the original Google document, Charisma and Ezcha, both reached out to me privately and wanted to make some clarifications and give their insight on the situation. I'm also going to be analyzing Space Builder's official response to this situation, including what he did right and what he did wrong. Considering the overwhelming amount of information I was getting at the time, it was going to take a bit to aggregate it all together. I'm also hoping to tie up some loose ends to this situation before properly putting an end to it. Now before we dive into this, I want to make one correction. So in my last video, I discouraged people from pursuing certain alternatives, and some of the reasoning that I gave wasn't necessarily correct. For example, I said this about the platform Mopaive, and Mopaive has a history of repeatedly shutting down, so it probably isn't a good idea to move there either. So it turns out this wasn't entirely true. They only shut down once, and that was because they were transferring ownership when the platform went down. I also said this about UX Hill, and is facing a potential shutdown from Kyle and Isaac Heimer. I said this because I heard that as a rumor, and I didn't go out of my way to check if that information was true. So I want to apologize about this because these reasons I gave for not pursuing these alternatives were kind of lackluster and weren't really compelling. I still don't recommend pursuing these alternatives though, mainly because both platforms don't have a playable client and going to UX Hill just gives you a roadmap landing page. I still think that Polytoria is probably the best option if you want to move on from Brick Hill. All right, now that's out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the situation. So after I uploaded my video, I get contacted by Ezcha, who is the person that was responsible for a lot of the information in the original Google Doc. When I got into DMs with him, he came forward and admitted that there were a couple of mistakes that he made when providing information to Charisma, and that some of the screenshots that he provided were out of context and didn't really have any relevancy to the situation. He especially refers to the 2020 incident, where he didn't really realize that those were distasteful jokes. He does provide a couple of counter arguments that work in Space Builder's favor, and has some of his own rebuttals, but I'm going to be saving those until later in the video. A couple of other things he does claim is that the document was quite rushed and that they could have spent more time not only checking to see if the information was accurate but also to do some basic things such as censoring some of the faces of the individuals in his sus builder video. He only did this because he felt like it was the right thing to do but didn't really think twice before publishing out this entire document. One thing that he does mention to me that I find quite interesting is that he says that Space Builder has changed his narrative multiple times, each time more progressively to throw Ezcha under the bus. This conversation ended by Ezcha referring me to the other Google Doc creator, Charisma, who proceeded to give his side of the story over an audio recording and impromptu interview. Now, I'm not going to include everything that he has to say in this video. I'm going to mainly try and summarize it to the most important things that he said in this video, but here we go. So I started off the call by asking why he wanted to do this over a call rather than give his explanation over text, and this is what he had to say. Yeah, so through through text it'd just be like really messy, you know what I mean? Because it'd be a lot of like, I don't know, the situation itself is very messy and, and convoluted. So I thought through a uh, voice chat I could better uh, explain myself. So the first question I asked was why he took down the Google document and replaced it with an apology letter instead. This is what he had to say. Me and Space Builder were in communications at the time, so I was like, okay, what do you want me to do to rectify the situation? And he started going off about 
like, well, you know, you ruined the site reputation, you ruined my reputation. I was just so, like, emotional and upset at the situation that I just, like, kind of replaced the document without thinking, you know, so I I'd felt bad. One thing he said that stood out to me was that he was pretty much just the person who put together the doc and didn't gather any of the evidence. This further supports the claim that Ezcho was the one who provided all of the evidence. I was just the publisher of the document. Like, I didn't find the evidence myself. It turns out that Ezcha may have found more evidence to some incidents that haven't been pointed out in the dock. However, Charisma decided to not update the dock and include them because Space Builder might have pursued litigation. And we did find some other things, but I was like, I don't know how far I want to take this either, because as you brought up in the video, Space Builder might pursue, you know, litigation for defamation. I didn't see it as defamation, though, because this was a factual account of the events that happened. Similar to Ezcha, Charisma also admits that the document was rushed and wished he put more time into it before publishing it. I do regret rushing out the document before we properly looked at the info. Like, the info itself wasn't wrong, but I only got one picture of stuff that happened and I didn't get the other picture from uh, the source who provided most of the images and screenshots. One thing I was really curious about was why Charisma didn't get in touch with the miners involved and speak to them and get their perspective before putting out the Google Doc, and this is what he had to say. Yes, I did. I spoke to the girl he added to that uh, group chat. I spoke to her. She basically said, yeah, he, he continued like being my friend afterwards and we're on good terms now. So so I was like, OK. And, and then she said he stopped a after learning my age. That raised another red flag to me because it's like who in their right mind goes on Roblox, right? Expecting to find legitimate adults. I mentioned in my previous video that Space Builder is the type of guy who tends to make distasteful jokes and has a history of making such jokes. And I brought this up to Charisma and this is his thoughts. I, I, I've always known him to make, you know, like ed edgy jokes. He never like tried to be weird with me or anything, you know, but he's just made bad jokes. Yeah. There's a time and a place, you know, I've made some horrible jokes that if Space Builder were to screenshot the staff chat, you know, I would have been like, quote unquote, canceled too, because I made a lot of edgy jokes. But some people didn't see what Space Builder did as jokes, especially after the New Year's uh, incident. So Similar to Ezcha, Charisma also thinks he went overboard in calling Space Builder a pedophile. I was wrong in calling him pedophile i think he is a sexual predator based off the information i have i think pedophile is like too strong a word and i think he has like serious issues you know he's obviously an alcoholic but i'm not trying to slander his name you know any more than like calling him a pedophile or whatever we had the right idea but we just executed it poorly so i can admit to that to conclude things off charisma doesn't seem to be interested in pursuing this situation any further and is willing to put all of this to rest right now i just feel kind of done with the whole situation it's been stressful for everyone involved i don't know if i'm willing to go any farther with this but if i am i would i would update the google doc you know pointing out some misinformation and stuff we got wrong how we can rectify that. Looking back on these statements, both Ezcha and Charisma backtrack on some of the points they've made in their document. This may have ended differently had they put in the reasonable amount of time and effort into making their document. Now, I did mention that there have been more incidents than what they've listed in the document. However, I'm not going to mention who these people are because quite frankly, that's their stories to tell and not mine. I received both of these statements from Ezcha and Charisma before Space Builder's response. I thought this would be nice because not only would it be nice to hear from the aggressor's perspective, but it is also going to help a lot when we analyze the details in Space Builder's response. Speaking of which, now we're at the point you've all been waiting for. It is time to break down Space Builder's response. I'm going to start off this analysis by giving a summary of Space Builder's response before I tell you what I think he did right and what I think he did wrong. If you want to read the full response, I will have a link for it in the description down below. And I also have it archived in case that link dies. So the response starts off with an update, presumably made in response to Charisma taking down the original document and making an apology letter. Space Builder leaks most of the conversation that occurred between him and Charisma. When listening back to the audio from Charisma, though he is willing to admit something's wrong, he doesn't back down completely. In addition, he described Space Builder as being very upset. 
All this seems to carry over into the conversation that is seen in the response. The second half of this update includes a draft of Ezcha's apology. Although a lot of the information is fluff, he confesses a lot of the same mistakes that he confessed to me privately. I don't know why the response starts off with this update. I feel like this would have been better if it were to have been put at the end of the response. Space Builder's story starts off with meeting a girl named Elisha on a Roblox game called Mike Up, a game that centers around Roblox's new voice chat feature. Space Builder had an interest in this girl, so he invited her over to a group chat consisting of him and several close friends. Space Builder thought that this girl would be 18 or older, because Roblox originally designed voice chat to be an 18 plus feature. But before it rolled out as a public feature, the age requirement was lowered to 13 plus. In order to access the voice chat feature, you need to show ID to prove that you are not lying your age. In the US, the first form of federal ID is usually a driver's license, which requires people to be at the minimum age of 16. There are ways to get ID before a driver's license, however that's mainly for people who need it for things like traveling by plane, and it is quite rare. I would know because I used to have a state ID before I had my driver's license. When you come across people on Roblox voice chat, it is reasonable to assume that most people will be 16 or older. The announcement that voice chat was going to be 13 plus wasn't so transparent, but it was transparent enough that if you were to be paying attention to Roblox news closely, you would have noticed this change. Now, I could hold this against Space Builder for not properly researching this, but I am actually going to give him the benefit of the doubt in this situation. Considering this took place on New Year's Eve, it was a special occasion and Space Builder decided to get wasted. In addition, he had been off his medication for a few days due to an error in his prescription. Because if you didn't know, Space Builder has a mental disability with some of the symptoms being impulsivity and having intrusive thoughts. The combination of both of these made for a mentally impaired space builder, meaning it wouldn't be out of the blue for him to not think rationally. And that is when space builder decided to hit up this girl and decided to ask for pictures and nudes. He did this not knowing that Elisha was underage, and it wasn't until near the end of the night when he realized that Elisha might have been underage. The response then goes to talk about how Ezcha is not a reliable source, citing prior occasions where Ezcha has labeled people as pedophiles without proper evidence and that he has a grudge against Space Builder, considering that they have fight quite often over work-related issues, which is detailed in an Imgur collection. After all, Ezcha is the person responsible for providing most of the evidence, so it's no surprise that they are attacking at the source. The response debunks the 2020 incident by saying that a lot of the people in that situation knew that he was joking and that Fire Magic Cat, one of Space Builder's friends that was indirectly mentioned in the original document, talked to his friend and claims that Space Builder has not come off as predatory. The response ends off with Space Builder stating that he has suffered permanent damage to his reputation because of this incident. He has been trying to seek help for the issues that he is currently going through every day. He has personally apologized to everyone who has been involved in the situation, and he is going to continue to seek mental help and that this situation has opened his eyes to how he sees his behavior from an outsider's perspective. All in all, quite a hefty response, but considering that Space Builder's reputation and the Brick Hill brand was on the line, it isn't surprising that he had to go all out to try and debunk everything in the original document. God dang it, Zoe. Come on, man. You do not need to do this. Come on, Zoe. <laughs> I'm glad I got that on film. All right. So let's talk about what he got right. Fortunately, he did the most important things correctly, debunking every single incident mentioned on Charisma's document and showing that everything that went on was consensual and not predatory. He and his friends managed to reach out to every single person that was mentioned in the incident 
got into contact with him and confirmed that what he did wasn't predatory. I think he especially did a pretty good job at debunking the 2020 incident. As I will admit that this section of the document was pretty lackluster overall. Yes, he did play the they were jokes reason, but he also got Fire Magic Cat to talk to the person involved and have them admit that they weren't groomed at all, which I think it was a pretty solid argument. Another thing that I think he got right was debunking even the littlest of details, such as the little stanza where they got a girl in the group chat for a little bit before kicking her out. It's clear that they invited her for the group call that was going on at the time, and after that, they just decided to kick her out. I'm not gonna lie, considering this is so insignificant, I don't think Ezcha and Charisma should have added this to the doc in the first place, because what purpose did that really serve other than just sheer quantity? But most importantly, Space Builder takes responsibility for what happened on New Year's, because even though what he may have done wasn't predatory, it was still highly irresponsible and unprofessional. Considering that Space Builder is a CEO of a company, I expect him to at least conduct himself professionally and not make such distasteful and inappropriate remarks. But let's say that Space Builder has a dark sense of humor. If I were to put myself in that mindset, you have to realize that there is a fine line between saying something that is funny and saying something that is offensive. There is a reason why a lot of dark humor comedians have to balance their humor to make sure that they don't cross this line. In fact, part of the fun is seeing how far they can push people's limits. However, Space Builder is not a comedian, so he doesn't have a grasp of what crosses the line or not. And that's why a lot of these dark humor people tend to just say stuff that is outright offensive and most people don't consider jokes. It's not the fact that people don't get it's a joke, it's just the fact that they're so bad at making jokes that people don't understand it's a joke. For Space Builder, this incident was him crossing the line, and that is something that he can't argue against. And for him to admit that he crossed that line and apologize for what he said is something I think a lot of people needed to hear. Now, keep in mind that Space Builder doesn't seem to be the only person that has a dark sense of humor. Charisma admitted himself that he also shares some of that humor, and it seems like Ezcha also has it to an extent. Anyways, let's start talking about what Space Builder got wrong, because surprise, surprise, this response is far from perfect. While the document does a great job in debunking the allegations, it almost fails everywhere else. First thing I noticed when I read this response is that throughout many places in the response, Space Builder is referred to in the third person. I thought this was a very odd choice because if Space Builder were to be writing this himself, he would refer to himself in the first person. I did contact Space Builder about this and he did confirm that he wasn't the only person involved in making this response. Listen, I get that having multiple people work on the document would help with some of his friends expressing their arguments directly, but at the same time, having multiple people work on the document removes some of the sincerity of the response. Considering how serious these allegations were and how they threatened Brick Hill's brand, the only person that I should be reading from is Space Builder. When you have other people do some of the work in writing the response, I feel disconnected when reading this. I get this point probably doesn't matter to most people, but this is something that I take into consideration. This is a platform that I have spent money on, not only for a beta workshop, but also merchandise. This is a man that I've also interviewed. I was hoping that this response would at least be made by Space Builder and not by his staff being an impromptu PR team. But I want to focus on the parts of his document that talk about his alcoholism. I understand that him being drunk is a necessary part in explaining what happened. However, the way that this was said in the document 
sort of makes it come off as an excuse. It is not uncommon for people to be overly aggressive and reckless when they're drunk. And there's a reason why the law doesn't forgive people for shitty behavior when they're drunk. There's a reason why you should always drink responsibly, and hopefully this incident serves a reason why he will not do this again. Now, I don't find the alcoholism excuse as insulting as the mental disorder bit. It is also written in a way that makes it come off as an excuse. Now, I am a person that is diagnosed with ADHD. I have impulsive desires. I also have dark and intrusive thoughts, especially with what I'm going through right now. But I have had to learn how to carefully control my impulses, and even then, it's not perfect. These comments shouldn't represent Space Builder, but unfortunately they do. Considering that he has an ongoing history of making distasteful comments, those who have been in the community for long enough will know the type of person that Space Builder is. And to add insult to injury, after this response he wore this as an avatar, which just makes this pill a lot harder to swallow. I did check to make sure that this picture was real because I went into Space Builder's inventory and saw that he owns this shirt. In fact, he's the only owner of this shirt. Listen, I get that Space Builder is an actual person behind the curtain, but if you are not willing to hold him up to the most basic expectations of him being a CEO, don't be surprised if history repeats itself and another scandal like this happens again. The other major thing that I think Space Builder got wrong is how he handled his approach when talking about Ezcha. Disproving his evidence and showing why he's wrong is one thing, but going out of your way to throw back insults and equally false and manipulated information is a whole other thing. Let's look at the second incident that is cited in the section, Ezcha is not a reliable source, where he claims that Ezcha made remarks about another Brick Hill moderator, Scythe, calling him a pedophile. The only screenshot provided where Ezcha even points to Scythe being a pedophile is this screenshot in the top left. I'm sorry, but anybody with two brain cells can tell that these statements are jokes, and weren't serious allegations at all. If anything, the following screenshots just tell me that Ezcha just doesn't like Scythe. Sure, it makes Ezcha seem like a bit of an ass, but I don't see how this hurts his credibility and make him less reliable. Also, just to clarify, Ezcha told me that he and Scythe are on good terms now. Near the end of the update section, the response makes a rebuttal against Ezcha's claim that he didn't do this over a grudge. This is a claim that Ezcha has also made to me privately. However, the explanation that he gave to me was slightly different from what was shown in the response. It contained both the statement that some petty arguments were excluded and that Space Builder also knows some personal information about him. But some additional details he included talk about how Space Builder and him have a pretty tense and hostile relationship. And while this slowed down a bit over time, it never really came to a full stop. This seems to line up with some of the beginning screenshots in the Imgur collection, considering that Ezcha asked for Space Builder to stop making those kinds of jokes. When the document elaborates further about the grudge, it mentions an incident where he lashed out in a group chat and apologizing to him afterwards. This apology has been documented in the Imgur collection. This all happened while Ezcha was developing the now dubbed Player 2 client. The collection details how Ezcha and Space Builder constantly got into arguments because Ezcha couldn't meet Space Builder's deadlines. It seems like this argument goes nowhere as both Ezcha and Space Builder can't seem to reach an agreement. I decided to talk to Ezcha more about this and here's what he told me. Space Builder originally wanted Ezcha to sign a contract to get Player 2 done before the Halloween 2021 event, which was a pretty tight deadline. Ezcha was spending a lot of his time optimizing the brick system, rewriting it in Rust instead of Godot's scripting language. 
The main reason for doing this is it would bring significant performance improvements. However, he couldn't get the brick meshes to render properly. I feel like Ezra could have completed the Player 2 client given if he were to prioritize completing the other features such as API support and saving optimizations for later. Given how terrible Brick Hill's client is right now, even with Smart Lions optimizations, anything Ezra would have made would have been an improvement over the current clients. The only thing I felt really is disappointment, considering that we could have received Player 2, and perhaps we wouldn't be in this situation if Ezra put in the work and the hours. At the end of the day, the motive for why Space Builder and his team went so hard against Ezcha is clear. As stated in the response, Space Builder and Ezcha have known each other for a long time. Combine that with the work hostilities, it seems like Space Builder and Ezcha still have unresolved conflict with each other. Considering how personal this is, I think they need to work it out amongst themselves if they want to resolve this. I can't fully trust Space Builder or Ezcha when they both mention each other. They each have a bias against the other, and digging any deeper isn't going to help find anything meaningful. However, I do hope that Ezcha and Space Builder make peace after this, and then they can go their separate ways. Before I end this, I want to point out a few other things that they got wrong. The response claims that the original document was written to imply that the group chat solely existed to add and talk to underaged girls. I checked the original document and nowhere does it mention or even allude to that this group only existed to get underage girls. I feel like that's just putting words in Charisma's mouth and winning an argument that was never made. Below that statement, it also says that Scythe and Ezcha left the group chat this took place in. However, Ezcha told me that he didn't leave the group chat, and but rather that he was kicked from the group chat. And considering the space between Space and Ezcha, I kind of believe him here. In addition, he claims that Ezcha never blurred the faces of the individuals in his Sus Builder video. While this was true initially, the response fails to mention that Ezcha later took down the video and re-uploaded it with the faces blurred. Not saying that this absolves Ezcha of guilt, but I think it is something that is worth mentioning. Alright, that was a lot to go over. Jesus Christ, it's already nighttime. <laughs> the last thing I did before this situation died down was to get further comments from Space Builder. Unsurprisingly, Space Builder remained distant a lot of the time and didn't really answer any of my questions. Considering that I have had a feud with Space Builder and he knows that anything that he will tell me is going to end up in a video, he probably did not want to talk to me at all. Well, you can't say that I didn't try. I mean, another good reason why he probably didn't speak is because he's done with this whole situation. Space Builder's done with this situation, Charisma's done with it, Ezcha is done with it. It seems like everyone here has agreed to put it to rest, and I can't blame them. When you get into drama like this, it isn't fun. It is incredibly stressful, and I would know this because I have first-hand experience. During this whole situation, the community is split into either defending Space Builder or hating him. Two echo chambers quickly formed where people didn't want to reason with each other. When I set out to investigate this whole situation, I made sure that I was approaching this from a neutral perspective. I mean, here's the thing. I don't hate or dislike Space Builder. Yes, he has his own flaws, but after getting to talk to him, he's most of the time a nice guy. I mean, I may never be good friends with him, but that's completely fine. I'm just glad I still got to know him a bit, and I'd like to see where he goes with Brick Hill. I mean, Brick Hill is going to be completely fine. In fact, I'm looking forward to the Easter event and seeing how that goes. But now I can put this whole situation to rest. And Space Builder, please promise me you won't ever fuck up like this ever again. 
Alright, I'm tired out, so I'm gonna end it here. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload my next video. This is Game Webcam, and take care. When I looked back on the video, I managed to come across this message. Space Builder confirmed by what the fuck? <laughs>